Jordan Peterson has great marriage advice. Within the pages of Jordan Peterson's book, Beyond Order, 12 More Rules to Life, lives some of the best marriage advice available. Rule 10 encourages couples to plan and work diligently to maintain the romance in their relationship. I'm John Henderson, and this is the Conservative Book Society. Beyond Order, 12 More Rules to Life is how each of us can and should move beyond a life that has become too orderly. In his prior book, 12 Rules to Life, Peterson prescribed methods for gaining control when life is too chaotic. In this book, he explains chaos is part of life and, and that there is a strong desire for order. But too much chaos and too much order are each each cause their own problems. In his view, neither a state of order nor a state of chaos is preferable intrinsically to the other. As, he, as it relates to romance, he shows why and how we should avoid a st stale relationship with our spouse. And so he gives us five points on marriage, and then I'm going to come to two points for people who are dating in uh uh, seeking a spouse, so to speak. But Peterson's five tips broken down from this chapter, or things that I've extrapolated from this chapter, uh, begin with number one, the view that you are shackled together. I know it doesn't sound pleasing, but Peterson explains that it's necessary for married couples to know that there's no escape hatch. Marriage is a permanent institution. He writes that if two people are shackled together, and those are his words, Fools will see this as limiting, but wise couples realize it is a strength. And if you're permanently together with no alternatives, then couples will learn to use that bond as a way to complement each other, balance power within the relationship, negotiate, stop seeking all romantic alternatives, and countless other ways of bonding together. So that's number one. Number two is trust. And trust is clearly an important attribute in a healthy marriage. It's talked about quite often. But what Peterson adds to the conversation about trust is that there are realities of what trust means. Trust, trusting somebody, trust, you know, is about taking risk that every happily married man and woman must take. Both, so it takes courage, so to speak. Both must be honest vulnerable, seek truth. Without trust, all else in a relationship fails. Trust, he points out, is easier said than done, but the total trust and honesty is the spine of every marriage, and it takes a lot of courage. Number three, spend time together. Couples who spend time together are happy, happiest. Peterson advises couples who want to improve their romance and their relationship to commit to two dates per week, which is over 100 dates a year. Over the course of a decade, that's 1,000 dates. His reasoning is this, is that no one is insane enough to go on 1,000 miserable dates. So forcing the habit, couples naturally learn to enjoy each other. Number four, make peace and learn to negotiate. Most good marriage marriage advice begins and ends with communication. Almost all books on marriage talk about the communication element. So you got to learn to communicate. And, and all of that is great and fine. But what Peterson drives at, the, the heart of that is engaging in negotiation. And it's hard learning to negotiate everything. But without it, you risk becoming tyrannical to your spouse or you're going to be terrorized by your spouse. And nobody wants that circumstance. Both create massive resentments you know, from, from both sides. So when couples understand that the until death do us part is part of the equation, part of the deal, back to number one, that this is a permanent arrangement, they learn to negotiate. People don't set out to be overbearing or to get run over. Learning to negotiate with one another respectfully prevents a lot of this heartache and prevents lots and lots of divorce. Number five, determine your roles. The sooner a couple can establish who's in charge of what, the easier time they will have negotiating. Then you can cut out a lot of the negotiating that goes on from the prior point if you have established roles. 
Couples can either take or leave the traditional gender roles, but for many, it's a good starting point. And then if you establish who's doing what, then there are far fewer things to negotiate because each person knows his or her job. So these are the points that Peterson makes in his chapter. Um, and, and it's an excellent chapter, an excellent read. I highly recommend that you read it. But these are things that will make your marriage better. Now, on to Peterson's dating advice. Prior to marriage, people would benefit from understanding two key ideas that Peterson sees as helpful. Number one, you make a marriage, you don't find one. There are billions of options out there, and it's not likely that you're going to find the one perfectly matched person out there. It is much more likely that two people can be committed to each other, to the institution, committed to God, and do the correct things to make a marriage work. In other words, making a good marriage is totally doable for each and every one of us if you're willing to make the effort and the sacrifice and the commitment to do it. The mindset of finding a per perfect person is faulty and will set you up to fail. Now, his second point is don't cohabitate prior to marriage. According to Peterson, there's no upside in cohabitating and it's pretty destructive practice altogether. And he makes some points in here. He says that, that you, you know, logically what you're saying when you cohabitate with somebody is that, hey, you're fine for now, but I reserve the right to swap you out if this isn't working out. And uh, I'm not going to make a commitment to you and I'm going to waste a lot of time on you. You're not good enough for a solid, profound commitment. You're good enough for now. I mean, that's a pretty harsh way to, to treat somebody you supposedly love. So from that angle, it's, it, 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 it's not all um, love and roses and all of this. But another point that he, he brings up is that the breakup rate among people who are not married and just living together so that they're basically roommates, you know, with like some romantic interactions, but they're essentially roommates is substantially higher than the divorce rate for married couples. And even if you do make an honest uh, person out of the person, your, your roommate, the, your girlfriend or boyfriend, then that individual, once you get married, you also have a higher rate of divorce than people who never live together. So statistically, not only um, logically, but statistically cohabitating is still leads to higher rates of breakup and higher rates of divorce. Now, cohabitating without the promise of commitment, additionally, um, you know, without saying, hey, I'm committed to this person, you socially announce it, you have a ceremony, you're seriously, you've seriously considered it, you do all the things that, that you would do with a, a marriage, that there is nothing good about that particular arrangement if you're just going to cohabitate and raise children. So it's horrible for kids and that he acknowledges that children born and living uh, in a household where there are married parents have much higher rates of success across the board than children that grow up in um, a single parent household. And so he does not see this as a justifiable social alternative, people who cohabitate because they have a likelihood of breaking up so much more often in raising kids. So it's not a good alternative for raising kids, certainly according to Peterson. And then lastly, it's a very practical thing here, is that you don't have very much time to find a spouse. The window for starting a family is relatively short compared to your lifespan. It doesn't seem like it at the time, but you have like maybe 15 years. And if you live for, let's say, 85 years, that's a very short window of time. So don't waste those years living with an unserious partner, with somebody who might do. That time evaporates very quickly. So take the choice of finding or the decision to get into the business of finding a spouse take that seriously. So, you know, um, wrapping up his conclude, concluding his ideas on marriage, basically what Peterson says is that the ideas that Peterson presents in this chapter, they're just not novel ideas. They're good old fashioned wisdom. They've been around for a very, very long time. This is the way like my grandparents 
operated. Everyone knew these things. And prior to that, gener for generations. So not long ago, everyone understood these truths. And consequently, marriage, child rearing, and family life were tremendously better. It was simpler. Everyone knew what they were doing. Peterson concludes that if you do these things, and this is a quote from him, maybe, just maybe, you will maintain the love of your life and you will have a friend and a confidant. And this cold rock we live on at the far end of the cosmos will be a little warmer and a little more comforting than it would otherwise be. And if you're going to need, you're going to need that because rough times are always on the way and you better have something set against them or despair will visit you and you will not depart. Plan and work diligently to maintain the romance in your relationship. These are Jordan Peterson's ideas. I'm John Henderson. This is the Conservative Book Society.